In another edition of the SVG Sports Tech blog, I have the pleasure now to be joined by the president of Advanced System Group, Dave Van Hoy. Dave, how are you doing, sir? Where are you coming from? And how's the rest of the Advanced Systems Group team? I'm coming to you from my home here in the Bay Area. And uh, we are all working from home, except for a few field engineers who are out doing critical infrastructure maintenance. Mm -hmm. uh, we are part of the critical infrastructure uh, teams out in some of our clients. But for the most part, we're working from home. And uh, actually, we're very lucky. We're a company of about 250 people. But our office in Emeryville only holds about 20 people. And so we have a very normal diasporaed workforce, and our infrastructure is built around that. Good to hear. Good to hear everyone say it. So we'll jump right into it. Uh, as everyone kind of transitions to working at home, the whole remote production is actually getting called at home because we're all at home. Uh, how are you and your team kind of helping people navigate that transition? And uh, further, furthermore, do you think it'll be more of a temporary solution or kind of something that'll be more of a long term as we kind of get through this pandemic we're dealing with? Yes, you know, the, you know, there's basically two, you know, major workflows that we are working with our clients on pretty much every day. Uh, one is the post-production workflows, and that has all the challenges of moving large video files around and what you can and can't do in the cloud in real time. And of course, the other is the live production workflows, which we're seeing a lot of written up in the SVG journals. And actually, I think uh, we, we thank all of your members for contributing to those because it's actually been very helpful for our clients. On the post-production side, we've been, you know, there's really three possible ways to solve for the problem. One is you do some kind of accelerated transfer to move files local. One is that you are going to work with proxy files and then do some kind of reassembly. And the last one is of course, trying to do it, you know, all in the cloud. And we have clients doing all three and in many cases combinations of the above. Um, I don't think we have ever installed so many file transfer accelerator servers and software in a uh, one month period ever. <laughs> and, you know, so there certainly seems to be that sort of seems is the, uh, I would say the fastest, easiest for people to implement. Uh, you put up a server, you put on a Spera or Jetstream or uh, one of the accelerators, and then you share, you know, you load up your, you know, you attach it to your internal storage system that you're normally working off of and give people the rights to their material and they upload and download. It is fast to implement, pretty inexpensive, especially if you have prov provisioned lines. But the, of course, the, the dangerous part is it's a totally roll your own workflow. There's very little control. And, uh, and so the team, your team has to really pay attention to who's uploading and downloading and, and make sure you're not stepping on each other. You know, the middle workflow is probably the workflow that most people would like in a long-term sense uh, because it allows them to check out files and allows management to keep track of who's got what, where, and uh, people to coordinate. But the problem is, those kinds of workflows almost always involve some kind of MAM, and therefore, fast deployment is kind of an oxymoron. You know, that is not something you do quickly. And then the in-cloud workflows are interesting and very enabling for some people, and for others are completely inadequate. You know, the, the that world is is getting is moving along, but it's it's definitely not a complete workflow for everybody yet. And then, of course, there's sort of the hybrids, which is where you're remote controlling your machines that are at work. And those are the worlds of the Teradicis and Blackbird Digitals and those kinds of things where uh, you're installing a server that's effectively a, an accelerated uh, window sharing device. And we do have some clients implementing those as well. Those are actually very effective in many cases, but they're expensive to implement and again, you have to have pretty good provisioning of your lines. So uh, we, we're doing a lot of those, um, I would say almost 24 seven. And, um, and then the other big challenge has been, of course, the live production problem. And 
uh, boy, I have to say, you know, watching the the posts on LinkedIn and uh, and your posts, uh, it's amazing what people are coming up with. Uh, we are, it's exciting and it's challenging and it's really standing people's ideas of production on their heads. Um, you know, seeing what Al Roker was doing from home in a LinkedIn post was pretty wild. But I have to admit, when you watch it as a user, it's definitely got value. And so we're seeing a lot of our clients wanting to replicate those kinds of workflows. And with everything from, you know, vMix and things like that spun up on their PCs they have at home to rapidly shipping switchers and, and TriCasters and all kinds of things to people's houses, um, it's pretty amazing what's going on. And then one of the things I'm really excited about that we're going to be doing some work on, uh, some more work on this week is uh, some of the all cloud workflow uh, using Gallery's Sienna platform and using NDI through the cloud and literally doing the whole thing, you know, in, in the cloud, you know, everybody contributes from their places. The nice thing about that is it really enables our, the staffs to do their specialties. The videos in the video TDs can do VTDs from their house. The audio mixers can be audio people from their house. It will be very interesting to see how well it works. I know that Viz is going to use it in their uh, NAB substitute broadcast that's coming up very shortly. And I think it'll be very exciting to watch. Okay, so before we let you go real quick, and to, to piggyback uh, the produ producing things and content from the cloud, do you think the current situation we're in is kind of hastening and accelerating, you know, that kind of migration to the cloud? And uh, you know, what are your thoughts on what we're kind of dealing with with everything in the cloud? Boy, those are good ones. Um, you know, we talking to our, our clients, listening to the news. Um, we're very lucky. Many of our clients are the big tech companies. And so they have some remarkable analytics and intelligence they're using to do their business planning that we're lucky to get to listen in on a lot of. My belief is that we're going to be in this situation for quite some time, uh, that there will be various forms of social distancing, probably for at least a year, probably more, mm -hmm. uh, maybe forever. And so I think that's causing people to think about production differently. And I think what we're going to see is certainly people want to get back in. They want to use their tools. They want to use that nice switcher they have. They want to be able to do that high you know, value production. Um, but I think we're going to see a hybridized world for some time. So, you know, are we going to see every, you know, you know, nobody's going to sell a hardware switcher or router or, or, you know, a control system. No, that's not going to happen, mm. you know, but, but what we are going to see is a lot of mixed workflows where we've got remote contributors, people who um, can't, you know, I think one of the big things we're going to see that's going to change the production and push this type of in cloud and hybridized workflows is the inability to travel freely and for some time, you know, I think that's going to be the biggest, the biggest thing that's going to influence what happens as we do that. So I think we're going to see more people experimenting with and using cloud workflows. I think once we're past the worst of this, it won't be the entire workflow. Sure. Okay. It'll be interesting to kind of see where we go from here. But in the meantime, Dave, I really appreciate your time speaking today. I appreciate Event Systems Group's support of Sports Video Group. And uh, we look forward to speaking in the future. But in the meantime, stay safe and stay healthy. Okay. Thank you, you too, and uh, we're honored to be part of the org. It's great. It's a great organization. We love what it does for our industry. Thank you. I really appreciate that. So for more of episodes like this one with David on the man, please check our website, uh, the Sports Tech blog, as well as the SVG YouTube channel.